Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. So to follow up Nicole, you know, went from Microsoft and Miller, in this is a collaborative effort, co-creating and how we can build out new SLPs, enable new applications to run at the edge. And how we're doing that with Intel is meaningful engagement. And we're going to highlight this session. So thank you for your attendance and your time. If you look at it, you know, AIoT, there's the cloud service side. As Nicole mentioned, Azure's been in existence since 2009. And when we look at where Advantech is at with regards to the Internet of Things, it's really connecting these cloud services to be able to make more elastic solutions at the end. To be able to move some of the compute that used to be done in the cloud, maybe doing some of that deep learning aspect uh, at the edge. But how do we do that? We do that through the collaboration of utilizing some of the IP building blocks from the cloud. We're going to highlight that today. So this slide, you'll probably see about 30,000 times when you're here at the summit. But if you look at Advantech, Advantech's been on this journey of intelligent system. And that started with what we originally called SUSE Access. SUSE Access was rebranded. And as it was rebranded into you know, WisePass, we actually started to realize that we needed to do more than just OD or updates and home management and monitoring. And we started to create these solution-ready packages, and we're excited to highlight those here at this event. And this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those SRPs in this presentation. And we'll follow on and deeper dive with Michael and, and Jeez when he's, he's on stage next. But again, the transformation that we're going through is highlighting some of the existing SRPs today, and those, SI, the, those SRPs that are enabling AI at the edge. But the reality that I want to be able to highlight is each and every one of you that are here, there may be opportunities for us to collaborate and build out new meaningful SRPs that can leverage some of these And that's that co-creation strategy that we're So why AI? Why are, we, why are we so interested in AI? I read an article in a scientific magazine that actually Alibaba in October made an announcement that they're going to make an investment of 15 billion in AI. They're going to build out seven labs globally. So when you see that type of investment, it's astonishing, right? Well, why are they doing that? They're doing it because there's a big opportunity in AI. 125 billion dollars is projected by 2025. This is a Merle Lynch, you know, study that's been done. So the opportunity in AI is massive, and in that opportunity, that's where we've seen collaboration, and even acquisitions from Intel. Intel's a, what I consider an x86 CPU company. But when they made the acquisition of Movidius, they actually made a decision that, hey, we need to get into the world of deep video uh, processing units to be able to capitalize and secure the hardware of that, so protecting that core. And if you look at the collaboration between Advantech and Intel, we are protecting that core. We're actually building out more meaningful devices, leveraging some of the VPU architecture that Intel has, that Richard will highlight. But beyond that, and this is what's exciting, is the value of AI. The majority of it, over 56%, half, over half of the, of the value of AI is in the services. So we can enable these devices to run AI with the service opportunity. That's the real co-creation opportunity to do. If you're an SI, if you're an ISV, you can create meaningful APIs that can run on these devices securely at the edge, create new meaningful revenue for you and your business. This is why we have the co-creation summit. It's to be able to enable you, to provide a trusted platform to go and scale your business, to be able to address your customer requirements, maybe transform your, your factory with new machine learning at the end. So with that, I'd like to transition over to Richard from Intel. Richard, he comes, to, he comes here from Chandler, Arizona, and uh, we're excited to hear what Richard has to say about the investments that Intel is making, how they're actually bringing AI to you. Richard?
It's my pleasure to be here and thanks at the Vantac to uh, put together a big event like this and then us to share our uh, vision in the AI market, right? So like Sean said, I'm based in uh, Arizona and I actually moved there like two, two years ago. And this year, I come back to Asia like six times already and two weeks later, it will be seventh time for me to come back to Asia. Uh, my role is to uh, to design the, uh, the next gen like you know, uh, computer vision solution in Intel and also our uh, deep learning accelerator in Intel. So it depends on how frequent I come back to Asia, talk to the customer, you can see how you know uh, we put so many uh, resources and focus on this you know uh, market and also product design. So uh, our product manager or program manager they actually told me that. Well, we need you know architect to stay in the U.S. to keep design the product, right? Not you know flying over the world. Otherwise, you should relocate back to Asia, right? So, <laughs> I don't know. So, well, these two slides is just to uh, get the lower year of my Right. So, um, we have many different numbers right now available in this market. So uh, I want to point out, you know, some numbers. I, I know Microsoft also have their own number, and we have our number. I actually found out that they are pretty consistent. So uh, you can imagine that, you know, how many, how much data yet you can, you know, collect, measure in a CD scale. Even if you are, you know, driving a car, how much data that could be generated daily by 2020. So these are the numbers. And they are so big, right now I don't even know how to describe it, right? So paid up, I don't know what is that. But um, we know if we are going to collect all of those data, right now we have sufficient IoT technology for us to collect those data, right? We measure data, we collect data, and we put the analytics uh, to get the insight from those data and apply it to our business, apply it to our uh, use cases and to provide better uh, service to customers, right? And how do we do that? If we're doing it today, the scale is not so big like this. But maybe two years, three years later, we're going to run into some challenges. So that is why, you know, Intel, we want to, you know, enable the smartness everywhere, not only in the cloud, but also in the edge. So depends on you know what segment that you are using. Deep learning or AI can actually be utilized in many different use cases. And uh, like video, you can actually utilize the video solution in almost all of these use cases. And right now, the deep learning solution is mainly focused on video. Right? And very soon, we're going to focus on like audio processing, natural language processing to enhance the service that we can provide to customer. So like retail, that is the, the, uh, the fast booming uh, segment, right? Uh, you want to know whether your customer is happy enough. In the past, if you used that traditional CV to design the algorithm to extract you know, how, what, what's the emotion of your customer, you will have to you know, design a number of filters for the faces. And uh, actually, the result could be pretty ambiguous because I, uh, it might be like 60% happy, but 50% you know, unsatisfied. I don't know what they said, right? So uh, for deep learning, the algorithm design, the complexity of algorithm design can be removed, uh, not completely, but make it easier as long as you have enough data, right? So you have good data sets, number of, you know, amount of data sets, and you have labeled data, then you can actually tweak the deep learning model to understand the data itself. So you don't really need to tweak the parameter by itself like traditional CV does. So using the deep learning, you can easily determine, oh, where is the customer happy, what kind of interaction or action they are doing in the store. Uh, you can do all of that in parallel. Right. And, and the same goes to all other segments. Right. 
And uh, because video is the primary data source for uh, deep learning application. So uh, if we do everything in the cloud, you will have to uh, tolerate like the latency and you have to you know, um, uh, take the overhead of the network team. Uh, all of those if you consider like petabyte scale. Doing everything in the cloud doesn't work. So I think you know, Intel and Microsoft actually right now the strategy is aligned. We want to you know, move the intelligence to the edge. So in the past, you probably need a big server or a red server to be, there to be able to do analysis or to provide a deep learning capability. Right? But right now, you know, with like in the new uh, software stack that Intel provides, you can actually run the deep learning inferencing you know, uh, task on CPU in a very efficient way. You don't really need to install a you know, discrete graphic card or you know, um, like, you know, 50, 15 watt or 20 watt devices uh, to have deep learning capacity. Right now, if you, even if you are using Atom, right, the, the entry level CPU, like 5 watt device, you can have very good deep learning inferencing capability on the system already. So we want to move everything, the, the uh, intelligence, the deep learning capacity to the edge so that we can ease the, uh, the latency constraint, the bandwidth constraint that you know, right now we already start experiencing in the real world deployment. So that is our strategy. Making everything intelligent, and uh, if you look at the, the whole end-to-end -end solution, you will see these devices. Right. So at the edge, you have you know camera, you have uh, the device that can produce data, uh, even your laptop. Right. Those are your data source. And uh, in the past, if you do not have that you know uh, uh, core processor. Actually, you cannot do any uh, deep learning inference in the most efficient way. But Intel, we want to enable those you know, devices to do deep learning inference. And also, for the edge server, which is a very important piece, um, we will have the deep learning accelerator that can be put into this pillar. And also, those accelerators can work in a backend uh, back data center. So uh, we want to provide a full end-to-end -end story for the deep learning market, right? And that is, and I believe Intel is the only one company that can provide you all of the ingredients that can adapt from the edge to the backend server. So if we, you know, um, get into a sec sorry, if we get into a second level detail about what to be used at different pillar. So at the age we have like you know atom or core processors set around. Those processors right now are pretty good, like I say, to run the deep learning workload on the CPU only. All you need to do is to use your free, you know, um, unused CPU cycle, and to run the deep learning workload on it, you can get pretty good performance today. So the cost is lower. The, uh, the energy requirement, the power requirement is lower, so it's very good for, for you to enable you know, your, your smart edge device. But if the deep learning water that you're going to deploy it uh, at the edge is too heavy, it's too heavy that you know, maybe CPU or our jet graphics cannot take the, uh, take the load, then you definitely have the option to combine our CPU with our Movidus chips. Movidus VPU, Vision Compute Unit, is the deep learning accelerator that you can actually run you know, uh, your deep learning topology on the ASIC in a very power efficient way. So the wattage can be 2 watt and provide you, like, you know, uh, very good performance. That is multi-channel, like three-channel or two-channel of video processing. Right. And uh, because this is a small asset and it is uh, uh, very uh, power efficient, depends on how many, you know, uh, how much workload that you want to implement at the age, you can decide how many, you know, uh, VPU you want to put inside your box. All right. So you have choice. 
It is not like, oh, you have to buy a very expensive, very powerful device and put it in the HD you know, boxes in order to get deep learning capacity. No. You can decide. CPU, not enough. Then one VPU or two VPU, your choice. All right, so you have many different options. And for the H uh, server, so we are mainly you know, uh, promoting like you know, ZR, E3, E5, ZR XP. And if you really need a deep learning uh, inferencing capacity at the H server, we have many different options that I'm going to mention later. That is you know, um, comprised by uh, the Movidus chips and the Intel uh, FPGA, like Area 10 as an accelerator. And for the back end, uh, you definitely can use those accelerators at the back end. Uh, but like FPGA, we were mainly targeting like the you know, Stratis 10 scale of the FPGA. So that you can get the uh, accurate uh, performance to pair up with the CPU. So, um, like two weeks ago, uh, we actually uh, officially launched the uh, Intel Vision accelerator, accelerator part, uh, design. So these are the accelerator cards that you can put into your system, and those cards are you know, available in many different form factors. So like you know uh, M.2 or Mini PCIe, uh, you can have one or two VPU on the module. So if you if you have you know free you know. Um, you know, available unused uh, mini mini PCIe or M.2 sockets, then you can definitely put one of those modules in a small box, and then you can process like you know four to two to four channel of video with deep learning uh, uh, inferencing capacity. Those are pretty good, but if I want you know high density, you know a very high throughput deep learning inferencing capacity, then what should I do? So we also come up with, uh, uh, we call it uh, the Movidus card, the PCIe form factor. We have eight VPU on the board. So uh, it can provide you very you know, high throughput on the deep learning uh, uh, inferencing. And also we have another version that is Area 10 FPGA, Area 10 FPGA accelerator. So these two cards, I'm mainly targeting to, you know, if you want to use a discrete, a discrete GPU kind of solution, then you can consider this too, because we purposely, you know, um, intentionally make these two cars to be very cheap and very power efficient. So if you're considering like, you know, low, you know, wattage of a box or, you know, lower total cost of ownership, then uh, Movidus BPU cards or FPGA card will definitely be the best option that you can have. Right, comparing, the, everyone wants the comparison, right? You, you say you're so good, uh, but what's the number, okay? So if we compare like CPU, uh, FPGA cards, our Movidus cards to the discrete graphics, for CPU, the performance per dollar is 2.3x compared to discrete graphics. The reason is that you don't really need to add any additional car, but you can run deep learning. Okay. And if you are choosing like an FPGA, it would be 1.9x performance per watt per dollar. That is what end customer care about. And if you're using like you know a Movidus card, it would be more than three x. And the distinct, uh, the difference between these two cards is that a Movidus chip is an ASIC, so you want to run the algorithm that is available, optimized by you know on, on, on the VPU, uh, and the feature is flexible, so you can actually accelerate non-deep learning workload on the FPGA together with the deep learning IP. And we also have the small form factor, you know, M.2 or mini PCIe, that is also better than discrete graphics. So uh, we have the open Vino software stack, uh, because you know we have so many different options. And open Vino actually provides you a single framework to access those hardware accelerator. 
Uh, so you don't really, really need to worry about, oh, I, do I need to deal with multiple APIs in order to use this hardware? No. You just use OpenVINO. It is freely available on the web. And uh, like last week, we actually open sourced it. Software package to the world. And uh, um, we actually work in like Intel and Vantag. We are working really close together to to come out with the M.2 mini PCIe uh, VPU cards. And that is the starting point of uh, this design because we're going to have like you know eight VPU on the car and MPGA car design with a Vantag version. So that you can actually, you know, get the full uh, product portfolio of uh, this accelerator from the bank, and uh, uh, you can actually deploy those, you know, hardware to many different uh, segments like retail uh, or traffic monitoring. Those are uh, all doable, actually. Uh, these are very horizontal platforms. And Intel, we are, they, you know, we committed to this AI market. So not only we enable uh, the frameworks, we also work with like, Microsoft to enable IoT H on uh, all of these parts. So that you can actually deploy your deep learning workload to the H device with these parts, you will run. And, and the manageability actually is a lot easier for you uh, to, to deploy your workload to the H. Right? So, uh, this is an old material I, I have, and uh, um, I will be around here like in the next two days. So if you are interested about Intel products or Intel deep learning accelerator, please come to me. I can share you know more detailed information with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Richard. So I think you know the way we want, I want to go full circle. So we highlighted again some of the Intel building blocks that they brought to bear with the VPU and FPGA building blocks. But if we look at Advantech, you know, again, what we've been able to do is take some of the core embedded devices that you've seen typically like in our Arc series of products, integrate some of these IP building blocks from Intel with the VPU, for instance, the Nvidia's VPUs, and be able to create new meaningful SRPs. So, Today, you're going to be able to see these SRPs demonstrated. And after this presentation, we'll be a little bit deeper dive uh, from my counterparts from Europe. We're going to go a deeper into some of these different solutions. But why did we do this? You know, we looked at it. Our goal is to shorten that time to money for you and your customers. So you can leverage a lot of these existing known good ingredients, these solution-ready packages so that you can gain access to data and you can make more informed decisions inside of those applications. But that doesn't mean that you have to use this as is. The capabilities as, as us as ecosystem partners, as us doing co-creation, we can modify these ingredients to really resonate within your space. So if we look at that, what are we doing? The tenets of, of IoT co-creation is creating the WisePass Edge Sense, which is a smart edge management software package for Vantech. And being able to incorporate third-party application software services where needed. We give you that vehicle to be able to onboard your application. We have partners here today, uh, you know, like Zadata. I know Zadata's here. Thank you for joining us. They came from Santa Clara. Uh, they run hypervisor on uh, VMs at the edge, be able to run you know, multiple APIs inside of work, work, workload consolidation securely uh, and, you know, in a manner that uh, we haven't seen at the edge. We used to be able to do these things kind of stand in the background, but now we're able to onboard and enable some of these different co-creation strategies. But if we look at the edge intelligence, again, those SRPs, we want to look at those as opportunities for you to get them out of the box, be able to integrate you know, your sensor, be able to actually run these um, fairly quickly. And if we look at it again, we want to re-highlight some of those different embedded building blocks. So Richard talked about the M.2 form factor, the VPU, scaling to many PCIe and PCIe and then all the way up to an FPGA card. Those are off-the-shelf solutions that you can buy from Vantech and you can deploy in your system. 
But if you want, you can also take the actual systems that we have and be able to start with an overall intelligence system uh, from the edge, be able to run your inference systems. Yeah. So if you look at, sorry, if you look at the embedded AI software packages, I, I talked about an elastic, elastic edge. In the past, a lot of the AI and deep learning was done in the cloud. But with these new capabilities that we have with the collaboration from Intel, Microsoft, and others, we're able to move these inference systems to the edge to make it more elastic. And you can build off of that. And we're seeing that these applications are meaningful in retail, smart manufacturing, and transportation, and there's gonna be many more. And with your collaboration, that's how we would take these new solutions to the market. So one of those is the license plate recognition. So with the Melvidius VPU, being able to do people counting, as, as Miller highlighted earlier this morning, being able to do new meaningful uh, solutions in smart cities. So this solution has been put together by Stefan and his team at Advanta. Running the Melvidius VPU with the Open Vino Toolkit. We also have the equipment vibration and monitoring solution. This is from a partner called ANCAP. PhDs who focus simulation software on vibration analysis. Being able to take their expertise, their domain focus expertise in vibration analysis, and putting that API in the edge, in our edge device, be able to run meaningful vibra vibration analysis, predictive analytics at the edge. We'll highlight that in a, in a solution that we have an example here. Next slide. So this case study, for edge vibration management solution for predictive maintenance was actually done in semiconductor manufacturing. And what we we're looking to do is enable real-time vibration monitoring at the edge. And again, you know, Richard talks about the latency that you see with some of the devices that have to send information back to the cloud. And being able to do that in real time is, is critical to success, especially when you're talking about high value assets like in a semiconductor manufacturing environment. So today, we were able to solve this pain by actually using a, a legacy uh, solution which did, did all the analytics in the cloud. So this case study, we were able to reduce maintenance costs by three million per year, increase the utilization rate from 98.4 to 98.98, 99%, but more importantly, it reduced the downtime from 72 hours of maintenance to eight. How do we do that again? It's through that vibration monitoring and analysis. Being able to do that vibration monitoring at the edge with the smart sensor that we have today, with ANCAP, and integrating that into a solution ready package, we're able to do this end to end, again, sensing the cloud solution. But what I think is interesting is, we have a use case today with the food processing plant in Michigan. It's a major food, food company, I, I can't mention it because it's under NDA, we're in a POC state, but they want to actually do six different types of sensing applications at the edge. One is vibration monitoring. They also want to do machine learning. They actually want to inspect the food, see the size and shape of the food as it's coming off of their food processing. Now. That is a huge amount of waste. So the thing that I'm excited is being able to take this type of use case, integrating the VPU into the, into the SRP, and be able to add new outcomes, right? Be able to do machine learning at the edge, be able to see that food as it comes off that processing line, and be able to determine is it good or is it bad, as well as doing vibration monitoring. So these are new applications that we can bring to bear by leveraging some of these different building blocks that our partners from Intel have been able to bring. So we're excited. So we call that workload consolidation. Instead of just having a device that's dedicated to doing one thing, we're in, we're in a real case scenario right now. We're, in, we're under POC. We're actually doing six different things on that one edge-based device, sensing six different things, and doing machine learning. So it's exciting where we're going with these solutions. So what we'd like to do, the call to action here, is really, you know, it's one thing to see SlideWare, right? But it's nothing like to actually see these devices in action. We encourage you to go to the actual exhibition, which is on the third floor, and actually see the booths. So we have three different areas. The intelligent solutions, 
which is set up. We have the domain focus edge and AI solutions we've talked about here in this topic. And then lastly, the AI platforms. So please, don't just look at slides. Go see the actual devices, see them working, and be able to talk to the owners of those different platforms. Thank you.